Watch the entire video my lovely viewers, I mean from start to finish, to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. To this particular question and the question that you or your friends normally ask is this but you supported HH and the UPND that is a usual question as Zambia must prosper I want to put it on record that yes we did support HH and the UPND purely on principle we wanted to project the truth about what our constitution says. We wanted to protect and defend the constitution of Zambia because we do not believe in third terms for presidential candidates. Personally, I was approached and requested to support Haga in the Ichilema and the UPND by various NGOs, civic organizations, church leaders, friends and relatives to the president. After engaging HH personally in private for about 11 times, he convinced me that the pillars of reuniting the country, re-establishing the rule of law, good governance, and running a meritorious government would be the pillars on which the UPND will run this country. At that time, UPND was in the poor position of fighting the Patriotic Front who had just expelled me. Today, however, just like the 2.8 million other Zambians who voted for Aga in the Ichilema and the UPND, we are here to officially withdraw our support of the UPND and the vote that we gave them. Aga in the Ichilema and the UPND and their lies have been exposed and it is clear that the UPND and Aga in the Ichilema are politically and morally bankrupt. As the good book says, our Bible, in Proverbs chapter 29 verse 18, where there is no vision, people perish. When I realized that Haga in the Ichilema and the UPND had no vision, I left the alliance and Zambia Must Prosper was born as a political party, not as a movement. Some of you have insisted that I have been bitter. I want to explain. When you realize that your friend has lied to you, when you realize that your friend has lied to the nation, and it is on the basis of those lies that he got elected, there's only one logical thing to do, and that is to disengage. There is no bitterness in me. I think if you've listened to my interviews throughout my political career, I have never insulted this president. I have always called him my friend, and so he shall remain. But the lies have to be called out. I am now asking every Zambian to ask Aga in the Ichilema to resign for the following reasons. One, 
failure to govern our country in a united fashion, as promised. This may seem very simple to some of you, but information reaching some of us is alarming, and we must call a spade a spade. Regionalism has reared its ugly head. And if we're not careful, we shall see certain parts of this country marginalized and certain people who come from certain tribes not being considered for promotion or for employment or for business opportunities. Bad decisions, bad policies have also characterized the UPND government. Implementation of controversial economic policies, even in the face of evidence that such policies won't work, is what Aga in the keeps doing. Implementation of questionable, contentious social policies without due regard of the impact of these policies on key economic sectors and industries, as we have seen. The failure to understand the repercussions of such policies on the vulnerable, Zambians, widows, orphans, the majority youths, and the unemployed is also a factor. The lack of care for the poor is totally unacceptable. The rise in corruption, allegations, and scandals surrounding the presidency of Vaga in the is now alarming. We have had the gold scandal. We have had sugilite scandals. We have had procurement scandals, all implicating high-ranking public officials very, very close to the president. And yet, the president has taken no action. We have had fertilizer scandals medicine scandals, CDF scandals, and now we are having legal compensation scandals. I need to pause on this one. I think you're in a lawyer's office, as you can see from the books behind me. Lawfare is not something that you as journalists must take very lightly. Using the law Using the law or institutions of the law to move fraud and begin to compensate your friends and yourself and other people is lawfare. It looks, seems legal, but it's not. In my little experience as a lawyer, a nolle prosequi is not an acquittal. You cannot at any time use the fact that the DPP entered a nolle in your case to claim compensation from the government. Further, it is law in the Constitution that whilst in office, a sitting president cannot be sued for his actions. Why is it that now we are hearing that this composition, which is likely to be affected to the tune of six point something million kwacha, to people who are in some so-called treason case, when only a nole was entered? The law is that only when you are acquitted and you sue the state and you prove your case for malicious prosecution by the state, can you be compensated. You don't keep entering consent judgments. Let me sound a warning to the office of the Attorney General, a very dear friend of mine again. 
Mr. Murilo Kabesha. We sat in the same law school, same class. I am asking you to reconsider these conversations which are being proposed for the so-called treason cases. A nolle prosequi is not an acquittal. It means the government or the DPP can bring that case again if evidence so permits or if fresh investigations are instituted and new witnesses are found. You are not free. It is not an acquittal. Only when you are acquitted can the government compensate you. I am asking you as the media and through you the nation to go and ask the attorney general the solicitor general including the minister of legal affairs or minister of justice why these compensations are going on this is government money taxpayers money there is no legal justification this is lawfare we must stop these illegal acts. This is a very poor country and we cannot be paying our friends and paying ourselves simply because we were put in cells. We must also understand that when you use the law to enrich yourself, it's unjust enrichment. Especially if you're a politician. Those people that were in the so-called treason case, did you hear them sue the government? If so, ask for that judgment. Which judge sat in that case? Which judge sat and declared that they were entitled to six point something million kwacha as compensation? Go and ask them. Short of stealing, using the law, this is lawfare. Also, the lack of accountability and transparency in this government has moved me to push the notion that we as Zambians must begin to chant for the resignation of this government. In Salah Tailo Leila. I'll repeat. In Salah Tailo Leila, you cannot be asking people who are hungry to give you time. Time for what? So that they starve to death. As a politician, your job is to find solutions for the suffering masses. When people are hungry, it is not for you to start saying, I need 10 more years before I can solve this problem. Let me say this directly now to the president, my very good friend. Mwana, people are tired of you. And we as Zambians are tired of you and your stories. It is always the PF did this, the PF did that. When you are campaigning, asking the Zambians to vote for you, you promised the Zambians, under your very own slogan, Bali will fix it. You knew what the problems were. So finish you lady later. Why are you complaining today? You didn't see these problems. If you applied for a job bigger than your brain, resign. It's very easy. And since we don't have time to go into a by-election, the constitution says the vice president takes over. Let Nalumango take over. See if she has the brains to run this country. That's the only thing we can ask you. There is lack of transparent governance practices in this government, which has undermined public trust in this government, resulting in cover-ups, blocking citizens from holding government accountable. Because HH has failed to discipline his public officials and his friends by failing to take action, to fire some of them, to do reshuffles, public confidence is now very low in this government. 
public confidence is now non-existent, if I dare say so. And the only thing for Zambians to do is to ask for Aga in the to leave us alone. I'm answering the question that you keep asking me, but why did you support him? But why? You are one of those that support. Yes, I did. Just like the 2.8 million, some of you here, we all were lied to. Now it's time to flip the coin. Further, there is a lot of polarization and divisions within society today based on region, based on tribe, based on friendship, and based on party affiliation. Under the UPND, the country has witnessed very alarming divisions which we cannot allow to continue. People who are close to the UPND are being favored. And people who come from certain regions have been fired from their jobs in the civil servant, some of them without even committing a crime or having been disciplined. Further, political arrests, political persecution, harassment and differences have become deeply entrenched under UPND. Citizens are being pitted against each other, based again on region. Where do you come from? Your name, tribal extraction, political affiliation. This cannot go on. This is not what our forefathers wanted for this country. This divisive, toxic atmosphere not only breeds confusion, mistrust and hatred but also threatens national unity which was one of the pillars Haginde promised me personally and the country also this divisive environment has placed a lot of significant pressure and stress on law enforcement agencies a lot of the people in law enforcement are now being torn apart because they don't know whether to push the agenda of this government or not. Because they don't even believe in some of the things they're being asked to do against their fellow citizens. This can't continue. The recent public demonstrations where the president went to commission a boho somewhere in some compound and cries over the high cost of minimum will soon grow bigger and bigger and if we're not careful this could lead to riots when a party in power and a president specifically cannot address or indeed misunderstands what the needs of his people are then that president is detached from reality that president is detached from reality you journalists will remember these as facts our first president, Dr. Kenneth Kaunda, the late, may he so rest in peace, was so detached from reality that when people began to shout for the reintroduction of multi-party state in this country, multi-party politics, he still wanted to perpetuate the one-party state. By the time he realized that he had to introduce multi-party politics, it was too late. He misunderstood the mood of the Zambians. That's what cost KK. You also remember, as journalists, Arabi, a very loved, the late president again, Arabi, a very loved president in MMD, who put up one of the most expensive 
campaigns in this country and yet he didn't see it he thought by putting up an expensive campaign and making people eat his campaign money people are going to vote for him he misunderstood recently the pf also misunderstood the zambians the pf thought if they put up massive infrastructure in this country then the people are going to forget kadarism then the people are going to forget that this was a third term which was being pushed they misunderstood what the zambians wanted i am saying this to you as zambians we have reached that crossroads with aga in the hlm aga in the hlm is trying to drag this country to the north when the country is saying we need to go south he is detached from reality people are crying ubungana udula and you want to go and start talking about the environment commissioning a boho clean water people are hungry what reality is this my friend what reality do you live in go and ask him aga in the hlm has three major traits as a person and i want you to mark my words he's my friend i know him one he takes credit it is not due to him that's his mo you heard him sing praise about himself and his government over the kazungula bridge which he never commissioned which he never built that's who he is there are other factors you take credit over when he didn't do it that's who he is watch him very closely two he likes shifting responsibility to others so when you talk about debt restructuring he's shifting responsibility to your children and your children's children because he doesn't want to pay that debt he doesn't want to face the debt head on what kind of leader is this who doesn't have solutions but he always postpones the problems for other people look at this leader thirdly haka in the never gets advice from anybody even where it is necessary we've got one surviving former president in the name of edgar chagwalungo sitting in ibex hill who has run this country for seven years Ndaga in the HLM doesn't want to go and consult him over some of the problems that you and me are facing. Why can't he take a I wanted the Zambians to see the sincerity in me. And I'm asking you to do the same. Look at me and look at the level of our politics. But coupled with that was a caveat. I didn't want you or any of the Zambians to be fooled that if we didn't give him an opportunity, you would be crying and declaring that ah, if only they had given a guy that chance we have given him the chance and you are the witnesses you and the majority of the zambians out there you have seen now that there is no leadership in that man there is no vision in that man he is offering the zambians no solutions at all apart from his own friends and business associates so i hope that going forward this question but why did you support him will not come back to me and i am hoping you will not bring this up so that we can move
and begin to offer solutions to the Zambians. My second reason for calling this presser today is to congratulate President-elect Emerson Munagagawa of Zimbabwe, who is going to be inaugurated today. I find this a very important aspect in our history as Zambians. Sometimes you as journalists, you don't keep your records very well. Please learn your history and keep your history tight. Zambia Must Prosper sends its heartfelt congratulations to President Emerson Mnagagwa of Zimbabwe on the recent election victory of ZANU-PF. Zambia Must Prosper wants to place the following on record. We support Pan-Africanism. And we believe that ZANU-PF stands on the principles of Pan-Africanism. We do not support imperialism. Zambia Must Prosper does not support neo-colonialism. We believe that African democracy must be allowed to grow and mature without external pressure from Europe or the West or any agents sponsored by other forces. As students of history and politics, we in Zambia must be clear on where we stand on the global geopolitical stage. As Zambia must prosper, we believe in being non-aligned. Yet, we must maintain our friendship with both the East and the West out of mutual respect. Zambia must prosper, we will not allow any military bases on Zambian soil once it takes government. I'll repeat that. Zambia must prosper. We will not allow any military, foreign military bases, foreign soldiers on our soil. We will not allow that. Zambia must prosper. We will not allow the exploitation of its mineral resources or natural resources with little or no benefit accruing to Zambians. Zambia must prosper will stand firm on the principle that when Zambians prosper, Zambia prospers. So in everything this party will do, we shall put the citizens of this country first. We shall amend all the economic laws that we have studied thus far for the benefit of Mother Zambia and its citizens. Such laws will include mining laws, agricultural laws, land law, banking laws, commerce and trade laws. Those are the laws that govern the economic agenda of this country. Zambia Must Prosper will foster good neighborliness with all its eight neighbors based on mutual respect for each other's sovereignty. Today, we are congratulating Zimbabwe proudly because history has taught us well. What is that history? We know what happened in Afghanistan. We know what has happened in Syria. We know what happened in Libya when Colonel Mama Gaddafi was overthrown and finally killed. We know what happened in Iraq when Saddam Hussein was overthrown on flimsy false grounds and finally killed. We know what happened in Iran. We also know what happened in Tunisia. 
we are also aware today what is happening in Sudan we are aware what is happening in the DRC we are also aware what is happening in Ethiopia what is happening in Somalia and we are also aware what is happening in Ukraine as journalists and through you the Zambian people go and find out why these wars continue or why they took place we urge President Munagagwa and the people of Zimbabwe to remain resolute in the vision to develop Zimbabwe with homegrown solutions. Just like Zambia must prosper, we'll be proposing homegrown solutions. We are aware that the economic sanctions on Zimbabwe were meant to effect a regime change. And they didn't start now. They started 22, 23 years ago. That's the history of Zimbabwe. Thank God. Thank God the majority of the Zimbabweans rejected this. This brings me to discuss briefly one little report that's the history we can't ignore that fact the elephant in the room which your report should have taken into account were the economic sanctions members of the press since the end of world war ii some 78 years ago the world order has always been skewed in favor of the former colonial masters of africa and the west in particular america by deliberate laws policies and economic structures that were meant to perpetuate neocolonialism economic sanctions on countries that did not behave according to them and indeed effect military regime change where necessary and those are the countries I referred you to some of them some foolish African leaders have accepted to be used to entrench poverty ignorance disease hunger and the exploitation of Africa's resources as a result of this economic order which has been existing since the end of the Second World War Zambia must prosper is congratulating our neighbor Zimbabwe for standing strong and refusing to bend even with very hard economic sanctions those elections were not being conducted in a country which is economically prospering the Sadiq report should have taken note of that those elections were not taking place because ZANU PF wanted certain things to be missing they didn't have the money and they're still under sanctions today credit goes to them for standing strong and the report by the Sadiq mission should have taken this into account the economic malaise that is obtaining in Zimbabwe when you squeeze people economically but you want them to provide everything simply because it's in the Constitution or in the electoral rules you're not being fair you're not being fair it is just like a woman at home she wants to feed her children chicken chips rice and have very nice breakfast eggs and bacon every morning but economically she's squeezed what do you want her to do she'll make do with what she has that's a reasonable wife that's a reasonable mother and that's what ZANU-PF did 
but at least elections were held. We must look at the transparency. We must look at the fairness. Did anybody die? Was there enough violence for the Sadiq region to say the elections were not free and fair? Of course not. Everybody was free, especially the main opposition leader. He campaigned and campaigned and went to vote without interruption. That's what's important here. President Munagagwa and the ZANU PF deserve our support and indeed all the help that they need as they strive to grow the economy and resist the pressures of these biting economic sanctions. Zambia must prosper will stand eyeball to eyeball with the Zimbabwean people and their leadership on their journey to economic emancipation. We ask that the ordinary Zimbabweans and indeed the region Sadiq at large put a lot of trust in the vision of President Munagagwa and ZANU PF. Zambia must prosper in government will not hesitate in recommending that Zambia joins BRICS so that we change the kind of economics we have seen for 75 years skewed in favor of a certain region of this world. We therefore ask that Zimbabwe quickly applies for membership into BRICS so that they can begin to cushion the biting sanctions in that country that their people are going through. This is to avoid the exploitation of their nation's resources because they have been under sanctions. We respectfully and strongly advise Zimbabwe to consider joining BRICS immediately as we believe there is strength in numbers. I am very happy to note that as early as this morning, President Joe Biden has congratulated Monagago. That is how it should be. That is how it should be. That is leadership. I don't know why it has taken Zambia so long to send that message. And yet we are chairman of SADC and Troika. The elections in Zimbabwe are done and dusted. Congratulate the leader and the people of Zimbabwe for conducting those elections under very trying circumstances. And we move on. I certainly hope that we have put to rest certain of your fears about where Zambia must prosper stand. And I hope the next time we meet, we shall not meet in this office, but you'll be invited to come to our secretariat so that you can see where Zambia must prosper will be operating from. I thank you very much for your time. And indeed, if there are any questions, we shall take them now. I thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Colleagues, the time has come when we are expected to ask questions. And like always, I will be able to guide that um, let us ask questions within what the President has talked about so that we are able to move together. We we'll ask that um, you introduce yourself, you indicate the media that you are representing, and straight up.
diplomatic consequence can this have if the status quo maintains? Then you've highlighted the issue at hand, minimum prices, high cost of living. What practical alternative can Zambia prosper? Offer right Zambia now? must prosper. Zambia must prosper. Mm -hmm. Offer to Zambians right now. On the cost of living? Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, any question? Yes, my brother. Yes, uh, my name is Oswald Kafanka uh, from Prime TV. Um, maybe I write at this question. I would also like to find out what uh, Zambia must prosper uh, has in the bag the issues to do with uh, managing uh, the economic challenges the country is facing, minimum prices and uh, obviously high uh, fuel prices. And uh, the other part is, uh, was it so hard for you, uh, President KPF, to uh, maybe advise from inside uh, the alliance from uh, uh, the, the the UPND Alliance, why was it so hard for you to be part of the solution and uh, not uh, uh, this role you're playing now, which is uh, more like uh, advising, let me say that. Thank you. Do we have any, or we allow the President to answer the four questions? Mr. President. Okay. Thank you, Diamond TV. Um, First of all, let me also take note that I have taken note of the fact that our former president, uh, the sixth Republican president of Zambia, Edgar Chagolungu, arrived in Zimbabwe yesterday. That's a very good question. My hope is that he is carrying a message from the current president. That's my hope. My hope. I don't know. But to answer your questions, the delay in sending congratulatory messages after an election, especially when you are chairing Sadiq and Troika, as Zambia is today, is worrying. It's very worrying. It sends the signal that maybe Zambia, and in particular the president of this country, Aga in the was expecting a different result. And because it didn't come, he's now not willing to accept it. You, do you understand? I'm not saying that that is what's happening, but that's the implication. The undercurrent there is, I'm not happy with what I've seen. Let me say this historically. Again, journalists, please, every time you, you read history, and this is not too far away, read our history very carefully. You remember when the president of this country, the late state council, Levi Patrick Manawasa, was also at Logan. Zimbabwe and the elections that were held, which the late Robert Mugabe won. It took the current president of Zimbabwe, Emerson Munagagwa, who was then within the government of Zimbabwe, to come and influence a change of heart on Mwanawasa here at State House. Because he took a stand that according to him, those things that he saw, he didn't like. And therefore, he was trying to push an agenda. He wanted to take a certain report to the AU, the African Union. Search your facts. I'm not saying things that didn't happen. And when a delegation was sent to State House to come and discuss that issue, the president of Zimbabwe boycotted. Instead, he sent ministers. There was almost beef between Zambia and Zimbabwe. 
we shouldn't allow history to repeat itself we've been taught by history let's learn from our history so this delay in sending congratulatory messages to Zimbabwe by Zambia more so that we're cheering Sadiq sends a similar signal and because Emerson Munagagwa the president of Zimbabwe was part of the delegation that came here he knows how it felt that time he's not called the crocodile for nothing he's a shrewd man trust me so we must be very careful when we're trying to be good neighbors if you can tell me that a hundred people were killed in Zimbabwe in these elections, I'll be the one to tell you first time the elections were not fair, they were not free. But how many people were killed? How many people were stopped from voting? What was the amount of violence recorded by the Sadiq report? The transparency was clear. But for me, the elephant in the room, and I repeat, was the sanctions. That report did not address that issue. That is where there's report for me, I have a problem. They should have taken into account the fact that Zimbabwe is and has been under economic sanctions for over 20 years. That has affected Zimbabwe greatly. Your cost of living question, I'll probably marry it with the Prime TV question. What does Zambia must prosper offer? Our solution to what is going on today is some of the decisions the current president has done or has taken, we wouldn't have taken them. You see, when you're running a third world country and you run to Brentwood organizations such as the IMF or the World Bank or any other bank, they'll give you conditions. Those conditions read the finer prints. What they are basically telling you is we want you to perpetuate poverty, remove subsidies. That is why the fuel prices have gone up. Remove subsidies. That is why fertilizer has gone up. Remove subsidies. That's why the electricity prices have gone up. Remove subsidies. And they don't care the repercussions on the ground. If you heard me speak, that is one of the reasons I'm asking this president to reconsider and resign. Because he's playing to the tune of those imperialist forces. It's very dangerous. What Zambia must prosper wants to offer is an agricultural solution. The one thing we have in this country for free is 752,000 square kilometers of land. Two thirds of which, which is arable. We have 40% of sadic water, fresh water in this country. We have human capital, the youths who are unemployed, the women who are unemployed, the widows. Marry those. This is a bread basket. As easy as that with good policies, good management. Is that what you're seeing today? Of course not. You're seeing textbook economics. We are going to increase the price of the floor, price of maize, and you expect there will be a bumper harvest. It doesn't work like that. You haven't affected the basics. It won't work. You must also take into account that this government has no agricultural policy worth talking about. And yet, the president was on the platforms saying, I'm a farmer, I feel your pain. He went to the eastern province and was raising to Mapamela and promising them, fertilizer will come down. It's not me, he said it. So the cost of living only comes down with these three words. Production, production, production. I keep saying this. You must produce in abundance for the prices to come down. That is simple economics. If you have too much in supply, prices come down. So we must produce in abundance. In everything that we have, with everything that we have, we must 
produce in abundance. If we need to reduce the price of midi meal, we need to produce maize in abundance. We need to produce tomatoes, onions, sweet potatoes, umumbu, oranges and whatever in abundance. That's the only way food prices come down. When we discuss and launch our manifesto, and I'm hoping it won't be here, but at the Secretariat, I'll come and go into detail over this, so that you understand what Zambia Must Prosper has done and thought through in this area. But agriculture must be the cornerstone, because you've got this country, you've got that sun out there, you've got free rain. Why are we this poor? I don't even want to talk about the minerals. I'm just talking agriculture, which gives us food. So that was what we should have done. But that's not what's happening today. Your second question is, why didn't I stay in the alliance? How do I stay in an alliance? I've told you the three traits of my friend. I've told you the three traits of my friend. He will take credit where it did not work. He will never take advice. Are you the only Jew, Prime TV, who doesn't know that you cannot advise this president? Honestly. Ask the people in cabinet. Ask them whether this president can... And I'm speaking as his friend. Someone who can speak to him or who used to speak to him face to face. When you realize that your friend can't take advice, you'll be a fool to continue sticking around. I don't want to be counted as a fool. I know for a fact that this president doesn't take advice. And he will not listen to anybody because he thinks he's very intelligent. Now, somewhere I read that no matter how intelligent you are, always ask the man who knows one thing. Because maybe that's the one thing that you don't know. And maybe that's the one thing that can help you. This president doesn't think like that. So I am, I'm sorry, I couldn't stay when I realized that this president could not be advised. I couldn't stay when I realized that this president was full of lies. I couldn't stay when I realized that there was no vision. I couldn't. In leadership, when you lack vision, where are you taking your people? I told you what the Bible says, Proverbs 29, 18. Where there's no vision, people perish. I don't want to mislead the Zambians. Ask him his vision. He talks of a manifesto. Ask for it. Ask for it. Read it. If it is there, don't. See the policies and the contradictions in the policies. There's Mutolo Piri. We shall f sell maize and no one can stop us. Where's the maize now? You create a hole, an economic problem, then you want to pretend you're going to have a solution. You created the hole. There was enough strategic reserves of maize left by the PF government. We should not be in this position. They decided to sell. Am I the only one who knows this? Zambians heard Mutolo Piri on the floor of parliament say this. You as journalists should take them to task. That's the kind of leadership you have today. This is where I am saying the difference between the Aka in the laid leadership and Zambia must prosper is we believe in servant, service-oriented, duty of care leadership. This leadership does not have a sense of duty of care. They don't care. These are capitalists. They're businessmen. As long as it suits them, they'll take that decision. I hope I've answered your question. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Uh, we're going to have another set of three questions. Please do not forget to uh, introduce yourself and tell us where the media house that you are representing. Yes, my brother. My name is George from the Fox newspapers. Fox? Yeah, Fox. I'm the president of Kotoli One Person for 
again. Yes, sir. Uh, last week, serious allegations were leveled against His Excellency President of the Republic of Zambia, President in the Chinema. That he is behind the abduction of the family. family. So that this allegation, according to her, he mentioned other senior government officials who include also Solicitor General Marshall Raji. Mr. President, the question that I have for you is when you look at the law and these allegations that are hovering around the state house. How safe? This is Rachel Chineshi. First of all, before I answer the question, let's look at what motivated her speech. What motivated Rachel Chileshe Katol to go public? She explained that one, she's a woman, two, she's a mother, three, she knew that our sister, the president of FDD, Madam Edith Nawakwe, is ailing. But the police moved in. That is what compelled her to speak. And I want to commend Rachel for speaking out. The reason is many of us here know a lot of things which are bad. We tend to keep quiet. When you know that an injustice is being occasioned to someone else, that is the wrong attitude to have, fellow Zambians. When I was in the alliance, I asked Haga in the about this issue. I told him that these things hovering around you. And there was also an issue of some land where he is alleged to have bought some farms. He told me he was nowhere near this issue. He lied. Second, over the land issue, he told me that he bought this land way before this and way before that. And as far as he's concerned, all the things that he did were legit. I am not sure about that because he never showed me the contracts for me to read the dates. But he told me verbally. But coming to Faluna and Hadem, if what Rachel said is true and because because she's willing to testify in court, then that is a very damaging, damaging position that the president finds himself in. And the people mentioned, the minister for Southern Province, Muetua, the current Solicitor General, Mujende, Mr. Sejani, and all the people that were involved, it's damaging. If you heard me, I said it is time for my good friend to start considering resigning. Because if things like this begin to appear, and there are people who are willing to testify against you and what you're doing by using law enforcement, yet it is you who's behind and perpetuating or who perpetuated that crime. You're not fit to hold office. You're not fit to hold office. I listened to what Rachel Chileshe said three times. I played, I replayed, and I played again. And I said to myself, I am hoping I'll be proved wrong. But it is the fact that at the end of what she was saying, she said, President, you have my number. I am challenging you. If you want, you can phone me. She was daring him. Have you heard any response from Aga in the That he called Rachel? That speaks volumes. 
when a woman dares you it's like a blind man telling you ndekutobe liwe she knows she has the facts and she was saying i was there she's an eyewitness she saw she heard in court i'm a lawyer forgive me there are two things that crucify you one your own admission if you confess to a crime yes i did this the, the court doesn't need any more evidence you've confessed but the second best evidence is an eyewitness i saw him do this how do you come back from that i heard him say this and then he went to do this how do you come back from that so George, the simple answer is this is very damaging. And if I were in the Ichilema, I should be firing the Minister of Southern Province. I should be firing the Solicitor General. Because Section 21 of the Penal Code has not changed from the last time I studied law when I was a student. They are accomplices to a crime, please. You can be an accomplice before or after the fact of a crime. If this happened and she's able to name them, they are accomplices. At law, they're just as culpable as the principal offender. That's the law. I didn't write the law. But you're asking me to talk as a lawyer. And I'm telling you, if what Rachel Chilesha said is true, we have a guilty president sitting in state house and Haga in the Ichilema must own up. That means there was no abduction by that sick woman called Edith Nawak. None whatsoever. But what else is out of this case, just like the other case I talked about, the so-called compensation for treason. Out of this case, people have been paid half a million kwacha each for what the term does force imprisonment, lawfare. George, we are using government resources, taxpayers' money, to steal because we sign consent judgments to pay people who are part of a crime. This is the kind of government we are looking at. We must be very careful as Zambians. Very, very careful as Zambians. I hope I've answered your question. Thank you very much. Uh, I want to believe there are no more questions. May I check, May I check this rare, rare privilege? To thank you, to thank you. for being a phone call away when duty calls. We appreciate your commitment and dedication to duty. As the president leaves, we will now hand over to the media director. We thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. This is DJ Mutati exclusive. All right, that's all for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you. Peace. I gotta go.